Welcome to the Vordal Gateway demo. In this demo, we'll see a typical scenario whereby the Vordal Gateway is deployed to manage and secure traffic to a web service. We'll see requests going from a client to the Vordal Gateway, which then provides a virtual service, which then provides the secured request onto the web service. Real-time monitoring is used to provide visibility on the traffic going through the web service. The service we're using is a stock quote service. We can see the wisdom for it here. Firstly, we're going to examine the web service being accessed directly using the free Vordal Soapbox testing tool. We import the WSDL into Soapbox here and it will then produce the list of the operations which are being provided by our service. We're interested in the get price operation. We're now going to view the request being sent to the service and here we see the, with Soapbox we press play on it and we see the response come back from the service itself. Once we format that correctly we can see the response comes back from the service. Now within the Vordal Gateway what we're going to do is we're going to import our WSDL into the Vordal Gateway so now we can apply policies to it. We use the service manager which is provided by the Vordal Gateway here. We click in and we choose our web services and we choose to register a web service. We're going to import the same WSDL which we just imported into Soapbox so that now the service comes under the control of the Vordal Gateway. We paste in our WSDL and we choose that we're going to deploy it under the default services by the Gateway. The Vordal Gateway now imports our WSDL and we see the stock quote service has been imported into the Gateway and now we can press deploy to deploy it to the Gateway. Now what we can do is instead of importing the WSDL directly from the backend service, we can import our WSDL from the Gateway itself. Once we import it from the Gateway, we're now going to choose the Get Price service as the service that we're going to run from the Soapbox. Now instead of hitting the backend service directly, we're now going to connect through the Vordal Gateway. We connect through the Gateway now, we press play on Soapbox, and what's going to happen now is the service request is going to go through the Gateway. We see the same response come back, except this time it's come through the Gateway. Because the gateway has imported the WSDL, it's also imported the schema that's part of the WSDL. If we change the message so it doesn't match the schema, we can see that the Vordal gateway returns back a message indicating that the message failed the schema validation. Now in the real-time monitoring of the gateway, we can go through and we see the steps in which the message is taken going through the gateway. We see that when the message had been changed to not match the schema validation, that now we see the schema validation failed for that message. We also see how the real-time monitoring shows us a copy of that message, which had failed the schema validation. We also see in our real-time monitoring that the messages going through, we had one valid request and one blocked. And then if we look at the total request here, we see also the total request processed and then the block message we see there that had hit that particular web service. Now what we can do in the, the policies section in the service manager is we can go in and we can apply policies to our service that we've just registered with the gateway. We see examples that ship with the gateway. The policies are shown on the right. So we can go down and we can choose, for example, default message. Rather than passing a default back in the event of a message being blocked, what we can do is we can instead return a 403 forbidden. We're also going to return the response as JSON, and we're going to apply an XML thread policy to the incoming request. You can see that applying the policies to the messages is as simple as just dragging and dropping the policies onto the service information within the service manager. Then we deploy this to our gateway, and now we can test in Soapbox. Once we send through with Soapbox, we see now the response is coming back as JSON. If we put in a attack, such as a SQL injection attack here, we see that we get the 403 access denied coming back. So now we can see that all the policies which we dragged and dropped using Service Manager are now being applied using our gateway. Again, if we go into the real-time monitoring, we can see now the sequence of steps that is happening in the gateway, whereby once the message is blocked, the 403 forbidden messages return back exactly as how we configured it in Service Manager by dragging and dropping the policies. We 
can see as well the message that successfully went through, we can go through and see the steps that the message passed as it went through. Policy Studio is the tool within the gateway which is used to actually create the policies. So the policies that we just looked at being dragged and dropped onto the services, Policy Studio is how those policies are created. In Policy Studio we can go in and we can look and see where our service has been registered. We can also see the policy library. So we see the XML to JSON policy that we've used, the 403 forbidden policy. And if we look at an example of the XML thread policy, it shows a sequence of steps that messages go through. You can see there's a wide variety of filters which are used to create circuits. The circuits are how policies are embodied within the gateway. If we type auth, we can see the variety of different filters that include the AUTH. Now we're going to add a policy called WS Security Authentication and message scanning. What we're going to do here is create a new policy within the gateway. What we do is we first of all can drag and drop a filter in. A policy can call another policy. So what we're going to do first of all is drop in a policy shortcut which runs the XML thread policy. This is the first thing we want to run. So we right click and do set as start. The next thing we want to do is W security authentication. So now we drag in a W security authentication filter. We configure the various parameters as we want to configure them. For WS security, we decide the various drift, validity period parameters, then we choose where to authenticate. We are choosing to authenticate against the local user store, but as we'll see later, we can point that to LDAP, SiteMinder, Oracle Access Manager, or other stores. Now that we've added that policy, it can be used and applied to a service just the same as we've applied the other policies. We're now going to add another one where we're going to insert a SAML token into the response message. We're going to call it SAML injection. In this policy, we're going to drop in a SAML filter. Once we type SAML, it narrows down the, the filters to just the ones which include SAML. So now we choose the various different parameters for our SAML filter. And then we can choose all the various different options, the confirmation method, and so forth for SAML. We don't when we right click to set that as start. And now what we've done is we've created two new policies within the policy studio. We can see all of the different connectors that are available to us, Kerberos, Oracle connectors, JMS, TIPCO, we can see the onboard user store, and we can see also the certificate store, which can be used for certificates. All of this is available to us when we're creating our policy. We're now going to deploy our new policies. Now these policies are available to us and what we're going to do is drag and drop our authentication and message scanning for the request. When we route the message to the backend service, we're going to do SAML injection. We're going to still return the response as JSON and if the message is blocked for any reason, we're going to return an HTTP error 403. We now deploy this to our gateway and what we've done now is deploy more sophisticated policies. Now, once we have our W security block in place in the message, what we can do is send it through and the message is authenticated. Soapbox provides a way of including W security username and tokens within the message. Now, in our real time monitoring and reporting, which is provided by Vordal Reporter, we can go in and look at the traffic to our web services. We choose the timeline and the range. Once we see messages that we're interested in, what we can do is simply drag and drop drag in the pointer and then narrow down the range in which we're interested in. Here we see the various messages that have been processed by the gateway over the time scale, which ones have been allowed through, which ones have been blocked. We can also go in and see the clients accessing particular services. Here we see the user whose username we just put into Soapbox. And this is a user called Joe User, and we see that they've been hitting the service. We can also look at the audit trail we want to for a particular message based on the message ID and it shows a sequence of events for a particular message based on the information that we've logged about it. All of that information is provided as a rich audit trail by Vordal Reporter. So in summary we've seen the sample scenario of the Vordal Gateway providing security for a back-end web service with real-time monitoring and report.